Let's take a tour of Adobe InDesign so you can become familiar with the workspace and the tools available. With the latest version of InDesign CC open, you can open your own document or this document from the practice files for this tutorial. Once a file is open, you see the workspace. The workspace is made up of an open document in the document window, this area, the menus at the top of the application, the application bar below the menus, the tools panel on the left, and finally, panels that are docked on the right, like the properties panel. As you explore InDesign, you'll find that you can arrange this workspace to have things you use all the time easily accessible, or maybe to show more of the document you're working on and less of the tools and panels. In the tools panel on the left, you see all of the tools you can use to create and edit content in your documents. Some of the tools have a little arrow in the corner, which means there are more tools you can choose from. For example, press and hold down on the rectangle tool to see a menu of tools. Then choose the ellipse tool from the menu that appears. You can now see the ellipse tool is selected. Come back up to this selection tool or the black arrow up here and select it. The selection tool is a tool you use a lot to do things like select and move content. With it selected, come out to the document and click to select this image. If you look in the properties panel to the right of the document, the properties panel shows options for the content you select and the options change depending on what's selected. Panels, like the Properties panel, are where you can work with pages, apply formatting like colors, and a whole lot more. Navigating in your documents by zooming and panning will make it much easier to work in InDesign. In this video, you'll explore how to zoom in a document and also how to pan in the document window. With the latest version of InDesign open, you can open your own document or this document from the downloadable practice files for this tutorial. Now there are a lot of ways to move around in an InDesign document. We'll start by discussing what are called view commands. When you open an InDesign file, you'll most likely see one or more pages in the document to start. So that you can fit the page or pages into the document window, choose View, Fit Page and Window. Then click back on the View menu. View commands like fit page and window or actual size work on the page showing in the document window. You can try experimenting with some of these other commands like actual size, but make sure you choose fit page and window before moving on. Another way to focus on the content you're working on is by zooming in and out. When working with content, sometimes you need to enlarge it to see more detail. We can do this using the zoom tool and other methods. In the tools panel on the left, Click to select the Zoom tool, come out into the document window, and click once to zoom in a set amount. Where you clicked is now in the center of the document window. Try clicking a few more times to zoom in really closely. Now if you want to zoom out in your document or make things smaller so you can see more, with the Zoom tool selected, press the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows, Frames in InDesign are the building blocks for your layouts. They can contain images, text, and design elements like a shape with a fill color like you see here. In this video, you'll explore the different types of frames available in InDesign and the tools used to create them. You can open this practice file for this tutorial if you want to follow along. And so that you can see the entire page, choose View, Fit Page and Window. If you want to add text to your design or you'd like to import an image, you'll either need to create a frame to hold that content or let InDesign create the frame for you as you import or place text or images. To start, you'll explore creating a few different types of frames and you'll create them in the gray area off the left side of the page. If you can't see the gray area to the left of the page, choose View, Zoom Out as many times as necessary until you do. To add text, you can create text frames by selecting the Type tool in the Tools panel on the left. Then press and drag to create an area where the text will go. After drawing a text frame, a cursor will appear in the frame so you can add text. Now the frame tools found here in the tools panel are used to create placeholder frames, usually for graphics like a picture or a logo. If you press and hold down on the rectangle frame tool, you'll see three frame shaped tools you can draw with. Frames drawn with any of these tools will have an X in the middle, usually to indicate that a graphic will go there. In this video, you'll use the Type tool to add and work with text in this postcard or a file you have, 
and apply some simple text formatting. You'll start by drawing a text frame and typing in some text. So first, select the Type tool in the Tools panel on the left. Come out into the document and press and drag to create an area for text called a text frame. After you draw a text frame, a cursor will appear in the text frame. In capital letters, type Design Talks. Or if you have text created in another program, you can bring that text into your InDesign document several different ways, including copying and pasting, or choosing File, Place, to place a Word doc, RTF, or other file format. If you don't yet know what text will go here, you can also fill a text frame with placeholder text by choosing Type, Fill with Placeholder Text. With the text created, you'll move this text into position by dragging the text frame. So select the Selection tool in the Tools panel on the left and move the pointer over the text. Drag the text so it lines up with the left edge of this orange line. The pointer should turn white and a green line might appear on the left edge of the frame telling you it's aligned with that line. That green line is a Smart Guide, which are useful for aligning content. Smart Guides are turned on by default and they can be turned off and on by choosing View, When you want text to appear in columns, one way to do that is with editing text frame options for the frame. In this file from the downloadable practice files for this tutorial, or a file you have, you'll create some text and then divide it into two columns. To start, you'll add several lines of text using the Type tool. So select the Type tool in the Tools panel. Out in the document, starting below the left edge of this line, press and drag to the right making a text frame as wide as the line and about this tall. Green Smart Guides will show when the text frame is aligned with the line and matches its width. With the cursor in the new text frame, type Every Tuesday. Then press Enter or Return to make a new paragraph. Type 6 to 8 p.m. Press Enter or Return. Type Art Cafe. Press Enter or Return again. And finally type San Francisco. Now the text may be a bit hard to read, so you'll change its color to make it more readable shortly. For now, select the Selection tool in the Tools panel, and the text frame should be selected. Aside from creating text in InDesign, you can also paste text from outside the program or place a text file such as a Microsoft Word document, RTF file, plain text file, and more. In this resume document, you'll place a Microsoft Word document that contains the rest of the text. If you want to follow along, you can open this file from the downloadable practice files for this tutorial. When bringing in text from an outside source, you can use the place command to do so. You can place text in an existing text frame or have InDesign create a text frame as you place the text. To make sure that nothing is selected, choose Edit, Deselect All. When placing text, if a frame is selected in your InDesign document, by default, the content will be replaced by the text you place. So to place the text, choose File, Place. When working in InDesign, you may import lengthy text that's intended to flow from one page to the next, or you may have text that doesn't fit in one area and needs to continue somewhere else. To do this, you can flow text between frames using threading. In this file from the practice files for this tutorial, you'll take the overset text in this frame, or the text that doesn't fit in the text frame, and continue it to the right. To select the text frame, select the Selection tool in the Tools panel on the left, and then click on this text frame to select it. Adobe InDesign offers a lot of ways to format text in your documents. In this project, you'll apply basic formatting options like font, size, and color to text using the Properties panel. If you want to follow along, you can open a file you have or this file from the practice files for this tutorial. The text on this business card needs some formatting changes, a different font and a smaller font size so it fits in the text frame. This red plus down here means some of the text doesn't fit in the frame. Also, you may make a few other changes.
Adobe InDesign excels at all types of text formatting. In order to complete a restaurant menu, you'll explore the differences between character and paragraph formatting and apply a few different types of formatting to the menu text. If you'd like to follow along, you can open this practice file from the downloadable practice files for this tutorial. Now with the document open, you may see the missing fonts dialog box. This means you haven't yet installed the fonts used in this document. In InDesign, any text that uses fonts that are missing from your system will be highlighted in pink in the document. To see the pink highlighting, you can drag the dialog box out of the way by this title bar. To work smarter in InDesign, you can save text formatting as a style that you can easily and quickly apply later to other text. In this video, you'll save text formatting as a paragraph style and apply that style to text in a document. You can open a file you have or this file from the practice files for this tutorial to follow along. Paragraph styles are a great way to maintain consistent text formatting, plus they also save time. Using this resume file, you'll edit a paragraph style and see how any text with that style applied in this document will be updated. If you want to follow along, you can open this practice file from the downloadable practice files for this tutorial. Graphics can play an important role in your InDesign projects. InDesign can import a wide range of graphic file formats from JPEG and native Photoshop or PSD files to Adobe Illustrator files, as well as PDFs and more. In this newsletter design, you'll place several graphics using different methods. As you place graphics in your InDesign projects, you'll eventually need to move, resize, and fit those graphics to their frames. In this video, you'll work with images placed in this newsletter design by learning about resizing frames to crop graphics, using the content grabber to select graphics, fitting commands, and more. When you place graphics in InDesign, by default they are linked to the original graphic file outside of InDesign. This way the document file size is smaller and you can update graphics easily. In this video you'll learn about graphic linking in the links panel and how to replace and repair image links. In InDesign you can wrap or flow text around objects like graphics, shapes, and text frames. In this postcard, you'll wrap the text around this image in different ways. If you want to follow along, you can open this file from the downloadable practice files for this tutorial. Creating and applying color is a great way to be creative in InDesign. To start working with color, you'll first learn what stroke and fill are, then apply color using existing colors, and then make your own color. To follow along, you can use your own document or open this document from the practice files. For to work smarter in InDesign, you can save colors you create as swatches and reuse them later for speed and color consistency. To save and apply color to this business card, you'll learn how to save a color you Adobe InDesign offers a lot of creative effects, including transparency or how see-through an object is, along with drop shadows and many more. In this video, you'll get an overview of working with effects in the Properties panel and apply a drop shadow to content. 